Last Sunday marked the beginning of the Advent season, and American Catholics renew their faith by celebrating the new translation of the Roman Missal. This is a time in our church to contemplate the words that we pray each time that we gather for the sacred mass. Advent prompts us to prepare for God becoming man. He dwells among us, but are we ready to recognize his presence? He desires to be part of our lives, but will we invite him into our hearts? He stands waiting to be discovered, but will we look for him? Let us begin our search for Christ today, and we hope that you enjoy this morning's presentation. Ladies check and gentlemen. one, check one. Are you, are you kidding right now? You gotta make sure the mic works. They all came to see me today. I see. Okay, I see how it's gonna be. Don't hurt yourself with that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. We have a terrific show lined up for you today. I don't know if you heard, but last weekend began the season of Advent, a special time in the church where we prepare both our hearts and our homes for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have special guests here today. Give us some focus during this very special time of the year. Got the Roots crew. Check out that hair. What is that, Pantene Pro-V? I like it. I like it. And Higgins. Higgins, me. How are we doing? I'm doing great. How about you, Jimmy? I am doing splendid. Thank you for asking. Did you hear the news? No, I did not. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to tell you the news. Last week, the president of the General Foods Corporation was included at a nice little uh, papal audience. Oh. Did you know that? Well, you know what? He took the time to give Benedicto a nice little uh, business proposition. He goes, hey, yo, Benedicto, let me get this uh, Lord's Prayer changed from give us to stay our daily bread to give us to stay our daily turkey. You know how much money he proposed? I do not. $20 million. Wow. Now that's a good price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's a lot of money. But you know what? He turns them down. About a week later, comes back. Same business proposition, $50 million. Wow, now that's a good price. <laughs> well, you know, he gets turned down once again. But well, he's not going to let that hold him back. About a week before Advent, recently in fact, comes back one more time. A hundred million, not pesos, not shillings, not baby chickens, dollars in American currency. Wow, <laughs> that's a good price. I'm telling you, but, but you know what Benedicto does? Is Benedicto, stroking his beard that doesn't exist. He's like, hmm, that's a lot of money. He thinks of all the good that could come out of this. And he goes, hmm, give me some time, give me some time. Next day, calls a nice little meeting of all his little red buddies, not these red buddies, the Cardinals, and goes, well, gentlemen, I have good news and bad news. The good news is we are to receive 100 million dollars to assist the poor. The bad news is we've lost the Vonda Bread account. Vonda Bread. That you was get a, it? You got to work on that you accent, Jimmy. Work on that. That was my Benedicto impersonation. Work on that. I have other impersonations if you want to see them. Let's see them. Oh, I do a nasty Taylor Lautner. Usually I take off my shirt for this one, but I'm, I'm going to keep it on. All right. Is that all right I don't with you? I get too excited. <clears throat> I'm a werewolf. Got any more? I can do Buckley. Let's see this. <clears throat> oh, Lord, your mother's a South Pole elf! <laughs> Idiots! That was good. You think, you think that was good? Yeah, you like should that. see my like Nicola that. Petrie impersonation. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to save that for later. I'm going to save right, that for yeah, later. We sell that. Right. Anyway, we got a lot we of have, things to do today. We have a terrific show lined up. 
told you guys. Wait, 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 did I ask you how you were doing? Yes, you did, but I'll tell you again. I'm doing fantastic. Oh, good. Are you going to ask how I'm doing? Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing, I'm so stoked right now. Advent just started and Christmas is right around the corner. That's I'm ready great. to go. I'm so glad this lovely audience got to see this year's U-Log video. Are you? Oh, that's right. You guys saw that. I cried for three weeks after you gave me that boost. That's three. a shame. That's what you get against. I'll show you a It's what you get for going against a man like myself. <laughs> Don't you go anywhere. We have a terrific show lined up. Ladies and gentlemen, The Roots. Wait, before I go, I don't know if you guys heard, but a late night friend of mine on like the west coast of Cali all the way in Guam had a nice little special where he asked parents to film their kids as they told them, oh, honey, I ate all your Halloween candy. Well, you know what? Oh, oh I guess you guys heard that. Uh-huh. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to one-up that. I'm going to tell one of my closest friends to tell my other closest friends. That's right, me, friends. Could you believe it? <laughs> and what happens when Santa's not coming? Sir, I'm just kidding. There's no need to cry. Sam, what happens when Santa's not coming? Roll the video. So, guys, we're best friends. Um, I called you in here because uh, I got a phone call from someone pretty important up north. Red suit, white beard. Santa? Yeah, Santa. I know him. Oh, yeah? She knows him. Yes. Yeah. Um, wasn't a good phone call. Uh, he basically told me that uh, Santa's not coming by your place this year. Uh, sorry, uh, it was something about Mr. York not being able to coach track to his, uh, to his potential. Hey, Mr. Ruckley, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, yes, Jeffrey, why? I just have some sad news for you. Uh, I just got word that Santa will not be coming to your house this year. Well, what is, why is that? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just got a note in my mailbox, and uh, I don't know if you want to tell Mrs. Buckley... Uh, but, you know, she, Santa's not stopping at your house this year. I, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, Coach Breton, I got, I got some bad news for you. Uh, um, Santa, it's, it's, he's not coming to your house this year. Uh, not coming to my house? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I heard the grapevine. I, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Did she have the right name on the list? Yeah, Leonard Breton. That's you? Class of 99? Yeah, that, that, pretty sure that was you. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I... No, no, no. We, we need to talk. Where, where is he? We need to talk to him. I'm pretty sure he lives at the North Pole, Mr. Breton. Uh, North Pole? How yeah. far is that from here? Um, I don't know if you can even take a plane to the North Pole, but I don't, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't consider going. Wow. Hey, uh, Mr. Mr. Murphy, uh, I just got a phone call from Santa. Get out. house. Okay. Santa's not coming because of track? Why? I don't understand. I'm not going to be able to deal with this this season. I can't have this. I want Santa. This is ridiculous. What? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just a letter. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what you could have done wrong. You're like the nicest guy in Cullenberg. I mean, wow. Wow. That's rough. He and I need to talk about this. Well, I mean, maybe you could, you know, slay your way up there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, just, just calm down. It's, it's no big deal. This is not the first time it's happened. You know, it's not really about Santa Claus. Christmas is really about Christ, God becoming man, the incarnation. The reason for the season. Realizing God's great gift to us. Becoming one of us to save all of us. That's what Christmas is all about. Great job, Jim. Not bad, huh? I liked it. Well, I'm not sure if you heard that classy gentleman at the end, but, um... <laughs> but Jesus is the reason for the season, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, he's right. Jesus is the reason. I'm sorry, sir, but not Santa Claus. Sorry to let you down. Ladies and gentlemen, The Roots.
All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest here on the show tonight played the very important role of God's messenger during the Annunciation. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome my close friend, as I like to refer to him as G. Brizzle. Ladies and gentlemen, the angel Gabriel. How you doing, Jimmy? Let's go. Have a seat. Let's get down to business. That was a cute little handshake. Huh? You like that, right? You like the handshake? Nope. <laughs> anyway, don't mind him. Listen, Gabe, I got a question for you. What you got? Why did God <coughs> pick oh, you? Oh, excuse me. I just got to clear my throat. <coughs> are, you, are you okay now? I'm good to go. Let's go. You need water? Get him a glass of water. All right, all right. So listen, <coughs> why did God pick you above all the other angels out there? Fallon, first of all, I am the most down to earth. Get it? Get it? Did anybody else get it? Did you get that? That is a terrible joke. <laughs> What's the matter for you? Come on. <clears throat> Seriously, Archangel Michael, egomaniac. The Annunciation would have been all about him. I'm surprised he didn't go join the cast of the Jersey Shore. I mean, most people don't know this, but he's a Guido wannabe. God needs to send someone with style and flair. That's how I got the call. You know, I hate to tell you, man, but you're really like the holy deity of all the angels to me. So what, Fallon? Just because I hang out in the clubs once in a while doesn't mean you have the right to judge me. Why don't you show us a fist pump, Gabe? <clears throat> I don't want to show off, but I'll do it anyway. Ooh. Oh, man, yo. Hit the Whoa. deck. This man means business. Woo. Do you throw the wings into that nasty combo? A little bit, a little that bit. That was insane. I know. Don't mention it. God, whoa, whoa, whoa. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, anyway. Now, how did Mary react to this? This, your, your comment. How did she react? How did she react? She was terrified. After all, I am an imposing figure. <laughs> I don't know if you heard, Gabe, but they kind of say the same about me sometimes. Do they? they no, the he's lying. They don't say that about lying? me. Don't honesty, listen to him. Honesty, Fallon. Honesty. Honesty. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm not talking about the guns. I'm saying, how did she react to seeing God's messenger himself? I know what you mean, Fallon. I'm just kidding. Listen. She responded the way most people do when confronted by an angel. They are scared because they've never seen a heavenly creature. But, you know, she didn't react in like the <coughs> usual manner, like, oh, hey, how you doing, Gabe? <laughs> no, she doesn't. Before I encountered Mary, God told me how she was created, especially for this mission. What, what do you mean, especially for this <coughs> mission? You see, God made Mary without sin so that she'd be worthy of carrying a son. This is no ordinary woman, Fallon. This is a woman above all others. I believe that she'd be open to God's plan, but totally surrender her life to the Father. I never thought that was humanly possible. After all, you people are pretty selfish. Oh, whoa, whoa, you're talking about human beings here. You've got a lot of them in this room, including the greatest football player ever, Matt McDaniels. <laughs> whoa. Ooh, Matt McDaniels, ooh. He's so young. Really? <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Really, after all? Only humanity could make the Christmas event all about themselves. Me first. That's all you people care about. Uh, that's yeah. strike two. I, I, I guess you're right. You know, <coughs> some of us more than others. Yeah. Let's face it, Fallon. Most people would have asked, what's in this deal for me? When Mary said yes, there were no conditions in which God placed her in a plan. I'm sure she expected, like, some guap or something, like stack the Benjamins. No. Her mission was to serve. Mary knew that she would be an important part of salvation history. Without her consent, humanity would not be saved. Her reward on earth was a life of grace and holiness. In heaven, she occupies her place as the queen of saints. Wow! That's a good price. Great I, price. I would take that deal. Higgins, would you take that deal? Yep, <coughs> yep, yep. I'd get way away from you as far as possible. <laughs> oh, you too, Higgins. Being that Mary completely gave her life to God, it surely is a fitting reward for her endless faith. You know, lucky to have her as an example, let me tell you. She's a role model for all believers. You can learn a lot from her. Well, Gabe, Found. thanks for being here. Good to be Sorry, here. Sorry, but you got to flutter away now. we got other stuff right. to get to. Ladies and gentlemen, the angel Gabriel. Coming up next, have a thank you notes. Don't go away. Ladies and gentlemen, today is uh, Thursday, 
December 1st. And uh, usually I use my Thursdays to catch up on some personal stuff, you know, check the inbox, get back to some emails, and uh, write some thank you notes. So um, hopefully you don't mind. Like, do you guys mind at all? No? Oh, thank you. You guys really are the best. Let me just get myself situated here. All right. Um, Andrew, can I get some uh, special thank you note music? Whoa, 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 hold it up. Can we get some uh, more Christmas feel here? Throw some bells in there. That's what I'm talking about. Where did he pull that from? We got that. I like it. All right, do it. <clears throat> Thank you, Aunt Jenny, for giving me a deep fryer for this Christmas season. This way, I can finally make Chris Kringle. You are Get a it? terrible cook, Jimmy. It's, it's a little play on words. <clears throat> Thank you, York Peppermint Patties, for answering the question, how can I make my breath smell better and get fat at the same time? Thank you, all 86 Christmas cookies I've eaten this past week, for reminding me what regret tastes like. You know, you are kind of looking a lot bigger now, Jimmy. Surprised you fit in that suit. Oh, you fit in that suit. <laughs> I'll make it. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Claus, for letting me in on the secret of Santa's nationality. I always suspected he was North Polish. <laughs> Come on, that one was so bad it was good. <laughs> Horrendous. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. O'Neill and Mrs. Villani, for teaching me the difference between the Christmas alphabet and the ordinary alphabet. The Christmas alphabet has Noel. <laughs> Noel, 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 Noel. Noel. I like it. We'll, we'll work on it. Yeah, we will. iTunes, no, here we come. There's the uh, voice of an angel. Oh, last thank you note. Can I get it all? Oh, stop. <clears throat> thank you thoughtful neighbors across the street, for the ever so considerate fruitcake. Now I finally have something to build my hurricane shelter out of. My <laughs> Evan, thank you notes, everybody. Thank you. Sign my name at the end, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to have our next guest here on the show with us tonight. She played possibly the most important role in all of the Annunciation. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mary, the Mother of God. Let me tell you. Hi, Mary. Hey, Higgins. Higgins, stop creeping. Now, uh, Mary, I've been dying to ask you a question. Ask away. Did you have any doubts when you were approached by that imposing figure of the Doubts? <laughs> of course I had doubts. Who wouldn't? I mean, being a young girl, I never in a million years expected to be asked by God to be the mother of the Savior. Besides, being unmarried and pregnant was not going to win me any popularity contests. Jimmy, do you have any idea what the gossip is like in a small town like Nazareth? Yeah, Mary, I'd have to say I don't, but I'd assume those camels talk it's some awful. pretty big smack out there. Absolutely awful. Higgins, you know what it's like? Uh, yes, I do. You should hear what they say about you in the halls of Kellenberg. <laughs> Love you too, Higgins. So, Mary, tell me, how did Joseph react to all this? <laughs> he did not react well. How do you think that conversation went? Oh, by the way, Joseph, I'm pregnant. And, spoiler alert, you're not the father. <laughs> he just stared at me with disbelief. So at that point, I figured, well, Mary, couldn't get any worse, right? So I continued, and I said, it's God's son. 
he not only thought that I was lying, but that I was losing my mind. <clears throat> well, talk about that awkward moment when. Talk about now, it. Now, did, did he ever threaten to expose you as an adulterer at any point? You know, I'm sure that like thought crossed his mind, but he is far too kind to do that to me. When the angel appeared to him in a dream and told him about God's plan, he definitely saw the truth in the situation. And being the devout Jewish man that he is, he knew the Messiah was expected, so my story all started to make sense. Mm. I see. <laughs> now, Mary, can you explain to me the words, be it done unto me according to your word? That is what's known as a fiat, and that's my surrendering to the will of God the Father. Did that, like, require blind faith or, like, total devotion? No, I wouldn't say blind faith. It was more of me giving God complete control of my life. And it's funny, as the angel spoke to me, I realized that I was created to serve as his instrument of salvation. And without my consent, none of this would have been possible. And I assume it's probably impossible to outrun an angel. Like, am I right or am I right? <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Like, I haven't heard that one before, am, Jimmy. Am I Seriously. right? But, okay, a little bit. It's kind of hard. <laughs> but as human beings, we tend to think of ourselves first. Am I right or am I right? Mm, a little bit? Uh, okay, little you're bit. right. A tad bit. <laughs> so this was my opportunity to demonstrate the importance of entering into a relationship with the Father. But that comes at a great cost, doesn't it? Sure, love costs, but isn't it worth it? I mean, God called me to serve him and humanity, <coughs> and I'm privileged to answer that call, don't get me wrong. You know, that should be our meditation for the season and for the rest of the year. I see. Mary, do you have any advice for our lovely audience and Katie mm -hmm. Cerner sitting right there in the front row <laughs> on how to get some focus out of this Advent season? I would say, reach out with love to family and friends. Set aside some time for prayer and going to Mass. Try your very best not to get caught up in the secular hype this time of year. All the decorating, the shopping, and the parties, that should all add to the celebration of Christmas, not detract from it. But most importantly, above all else, remember my son in everything that you do. Mary, that was beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Higgins, wasn't that beautiful? Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, Mary, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Always lovely having you. But <laughs> don't you go away. I won't. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up right now, our musical guest for the day. You might have heard her in a former Christmas special, Sleigh Ride, our very own Tita Casangana, singing an Advent favorite. Tita, take it away. Shall come to thee, O 
One of the terms that we often hear in church circles nowadays from Pope Benedict are the words new evangelization. And what do we mean by that? When the Holy Father talks about new evangelization, he means this. How do we take the gospel of the eternal Jesus Christ and make it applicable, meaningful, appealing to this world of today? And if these guys haven't done it, I don't know who else would have. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Under the direction of Mr. Basil, they put in a lot of time writing this thing. I didn't even know what the show was, okay? I and mean, this is all uh, a lot of ingenuity and a lot of creativity. But the important thing is never to be caught up in the moment where we forget about Jesus Christ, to be conscious of the power of Christ in our lives. One of the things I don't think you guys often realize is that you have it all. You have it all. You have been given every possible spiritual gift. And the challenge during the Advent season and the Christmas season is to say yes to that those gifts you've received and to use them well and you've got it you have it all which means you have an obligation to come to jesus and to bring others to jesus as a memorial for today we want to bless very simple holy cards with santa kneeling at the crash before the child jesus we also would like to give out today uh, our 25th anniversary uh, cd and let's say a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we ask you to send your blessings upon these images of Christ, your Son. As we look at the image and as we listen to our spiritual music, we pray that we would grow to be more faithful. And we ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.